It goes without saying that we should take all UFO reports with a certain pinch of salt, at least initially. And that was very much the case with an alleged UFO and alien encounter from a small town in Wisconsin in the early 60s, which was widely considered to be a hoax for many years. The encounter has persisted, however, not least as the witnesses never once altered their story and researchers have continued to return to the case to investigate just how real the Eagle River incident might have been. The account itself unfolded at around 11 a.m. on April 18, 1961, when chicken farmer Joe Simington witnessed a flying saucer suddenly appear in the sky and land on his farm in Eagle River, Wisconsin. At the time of the sighting, Simington was eating breakfast when he heard a sudden sound coming from outside. He immediately ran out to his front porch and was amazed to see the dish-shaped object descending. Simington described the object as silver but brighter than crow and it appeared to be 12 feet high and around 30 feet across. He further described the object as being like two plates or bowls that were inverted over the top of each other, which is remarkably similar to how many of these curious aerial vehicles were described at the start of the modern UFO era. As soon as the object landed, a hatch opened on the side of the craft and three dark-skinned humanoid aliens appeared. Each was wearing the same style of uniform that appeared to be very dark blue or even black, as well as helmet caps. Simington remained where he was and watched as one of the humanoids ventured out of this otherworldly vehicle. He would further recall that the aliens were carrying a thermos jug-like bottle that was beautiful looking and unlike anything he had ever seen before. He would elaborate that this jug had two silver handles and appeared to be made from the same material as the craft itself, appearing to be heavier than aluminum but lighter than steel. The man approaching him and Simington had the realization that they required water. He later recalled in his report that this humanoid didn't speak, but merely mentioned by tipping his head backwards and making motions as if drinking. He happily obliged, taking the jug from the alien and proceeding to fill it with water. He returned and went to pass the jug back to the humanoid. As he did so, he was forced to lean slightly to his left and managed to see inside the disc-shaped vehicle, as well as the other two humanoids who were still inside. One of them appeared to be engaged with some kind of panel while the other appeared to be cooking some kind of foot on a strange heating unit. He would elaborate that although he couldn't see any elements of flames, the humanoid appeared to be frying some kind of cake. As he was watching him cook, the humanoid noticed his interest. A moment later, the humanoid reached for several of the cakes and handed them to Simonton. He stated that they appeared very similar to pancakes. Simonton maintained that no type of verbal communication took place between he and the humanoids. However, he still managed to understand them. For example, when he returned the jug of water to the humanoid, he immediately placed his right hand to the tip of his forehead as if saying thanks or you're welcome. Following this brief exchange, the humanoid returned inside the craft with the hatch closing tightly behind him. Simonton recalled that there were no visible seams or hinges to suggest that there was even a hatch there, just seamless, smooth, metallic silver. After several moments, the object rose from the ground, stopping temporarily before tipping slightly forward. Then, in an instant, it shot off into the distance and disappeared. In the second after it left, Simiton witnessed a nearby tree being bent completely backward as if experiencing some kind of backlash from the cosmic vehicle. He later inspected the tree and, much to his shock, discovered it was completely undamaged. Simiton recalled further details from the encounter. For example, he realized that rather than resting on the ground, as he had initially thought, it was hovering ever so slightly above it. This detail could perhaps explain why there is rarely any evidence that a physical craft had ever been there. Furthermore, as indicated by the undamaged tree that clearly experienced some kind of wave of force when the craft vacated the area, it was Simiton's belief that the propulsion method was unlike anything he had seen on Earth or could even imagine.